All right, how's that look? Good, okay. Um, I have like, oh wait, let me get the chat up so I can see that too. Awesome, cool. Uh, I have like three monitors and the camera's on this one, the notes are on that one and the presentation's on that one. So apologies for, for this. Uh, also, this is my first time presenting on this topic and these slides are uh, a couple, about 20 minutes old. So uh, we'll, we'll see, how, we'll do our best. Um, so. Right. So, uh, so like, so the free mocap project is something that is effectively been a quarantine project for my lab. I am a professor at Northeastern studying human movement neuroscience um, in Boston, Massachusetts, and um, this project sort of arose over the past two years or so, and it's I'm pretty excited about it. So, um, let's see. I'm going to be presenting. So I'll, let's see. I'll, I'll just do this. So first of all, motion capture. Uh, if you're not aware of that, hold on a second. Okay. So motion capture is re refers to a class of tools that are used to record three-dimensional movement. Generally, in my world, I tend to focus on human movement, but it is also used to, to record animal movement, robotic movement. Um, pretty much any time something is moving in three dimensions in the world and you're trying to record that accurately, you're using something that falls under the umbrella of motion capture. Um, it's used in movies, video games, sports biomechanics, uh, clinical environments, gate rehab. Uh, and in my uh, case, it's used as a primary research tool for the study of human movement. And for my case, trying to understand the neural bases of how humans move through the world. So I'm gonna begin in the, I suppose, middle uh, with this animation. So this was an animation that I built. It was sort of the end of a long, sort of pretty long path of work. And this was sort of the initial post that I released onto Twitter and it got a pretty good response that has sort of been nicely um, supportive of the, of the project. So there's a lot going on here. That's kind of the point. Um, I'm going to be blasting through a lot of videos. Uh, if you want to see them later, uh, you'll, you'll have to watch the YouTube video. So this is more of a, I, I take a kind of shock and awe approach to presentations. So just prepare to drink from a visual fire hose and get what you get out of it. The details, uh, the, the important part should be, will be emphasized. Um, so a quick roadmap for the talk. Um, this project is, is rather personal for me. Um, wasn't really expecting to be, but it sort of, as it, the way that it has uh, come about in the end winds up being kind of the end of a pretty long sort of complex path. So I'm gonna be presenting this project um, from through that lens of sort of the, per, the, the personal narrative of my life that led to this project's inception and also to give it sort of context and as well as some sort of technological founding. So I'll start with the prehistory. Uh, and then talk a little bit about the birth of the free mocap project as it currently exists and it's the way it is. Then we'll talk a little bit about where we are now and talk about where we are going from here. Um, and that last part will have sort of some tags about how, um, why I'm excited to be a part of this community now. So, and my videos are not auto playing so I'll have to click on them like it's okay so uh this all goes so I, I first started working with motion capture in roughly 2008 when i started working on my phd with brett fagin uh this was done at rpi in albany new york um and i'm here showing uh demonstrating an, an augmented reality projected ground plane that we use to study the visual control of human locomotion. Um, in particular, my research at that time was kind of the impact of it was that I, I was blending visual control with musculoskeletal biomechanics. So that was sort of the, you know, so since I was mostly presenting to vision scientists, it was a lot of skeletons uh, and that, that so the, the general skeletal theme that will pervade throughout the rest of this presentation arises from there. Um, so that was my, 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 my dissertation days. And after graduating from there, I moved to University of Texas at Austin to work with Mary Hayhoe, who is a world expert 
classical OG person on studying uh, natural behavior and specifically the way that we use eye movements to support getting the visual information that we need to move in natural environments. Uh, in that time, I the task that I was performing was to develop methods to uh, find ways to record full body human movement and mobile eye tracking of people walking over real world rough terrain. Um, this was sort of the earlier phase of that, uh, the sort of the initial uh, paper, which is published and out. Um, also, this animation was briefly the top post of all time on Reddit slash our data is beautiful. So that's cool. Um, and then this is sort of where, you know, at the, the second iteration had sort of better, uh, better equipment, better cameras, and um, now sort of the technology and data captured was getting to the point where it was amenable for uh, computer vision based analysis of the information that was being recorded from the people. So um, scientifically, that's also very cool, but also just from a, again, from a personal standpoint, this was kind of my first sort of foray introduction into computer vision, which this project winds up being built on. Also, it's just kind of fun. Uh, I, call, I affectionately refer to these fellows as laser skeletons because they are skeletons with lasers shooting out of their heads. Uh, there are currently no get lasers in free mocap, but that is very much on the path. Um, while I was doing this, in, in the course of the postdoctoral studies and um, development of this sort of like, this is my primary research project, uh, I also found myself in this uh, space of making these sort of center of mass gifts, as I would call them, uh, basically hand annotating uh, athlete gifts that I would found, find on online, often on Reddit, and um, just draw it basically literally hand drawing over each frame uh, in order to extract sort of certain biomechanical principles. And I would make a post about it online and it would, it would tend to get a lot of attention. So this was kind of my first uh, experience uh, with kind of on the popular science sort of viral internet side of the world, uh, which was really interesting and informative in a lot of ways. Um, but also a ton of work, like literally every frame I had to click through on this is the elbow, this is the knee. So every one of these was hours and hours and hours of like me sitting on my couch clicking over and over again, and then doing analyses in MATLAB because I was before I was cool enough to know how to do Python. Um, while that was happening uh, around 20, so that started around 2016. Uh, again, this is happening at the same time as the outdoor laser skeleton research. Um, I happened to come across a thing called OpenPose. Uh, OpenPose is, I think, probably the first viable marketless motion capture software. It uses convolutional neural networks, uh, which are machine learning. You know, people in my role don't tend to use the word AI, but it is appropriate. Um, they are AI-based methods for basically drawing a stick figure skeleton over a person. Um, so if I can click back to, so here, sort of your traditional motion capture, um, like this guy here, he's wearing markers, like reflective markers on his body that reflect infrared light. And then the, the cameras use that reflected light to, to draw the skeleton, um, which is very accurate, but also, you know, you have specialized equipment, you have to be in a lab, doesn't work outside, all sorts of problems. Uh, this, when I first saw it was absolutely mind blowing. Like it, I'm still honestly a little blown away that something like this is possible. Um, but basically what's happening is you're using convolutional neural networks, machine learning, AI, computer vision, whatever you want to call it, uh, to draw a skeleton over the person that has the same function as the markers that were be the reflective markers that are used in traditional motion capture. Um, so, and I, I can't overemphasize how hard it was for me with my training to make this video. My degree is in philosophy. And then I found my way into neuroscience in grad school. Uh, I don't know how to do software development. Uh, I guess I kind of do now. Uh, so this was a, a brute force approach through a pretty sloggy GitHub repository, which is a kind of a theme that will come back. Um, so, uh, but basically I, I saw, 
I saw the animations on the right and I said, this is something I need to do and sort of brute force my way through being able to record it. And then promptly uh, forgot about it for two years because I, in the summer of 2019, I moved up to Boston to start my professorship and to study human movement neuroscience at Northeastern University. Uh, Northeastern fancy school built me a big fancy lab um, and that was completed in December of 2019. Um, just for some context, uh, this is a this is a, a, a very nice example of, of, of it, is a, it is an example of a very nice traditional motion capture space. Uh, the motion capture camera, the motion capture system in this lab uh, is about a quarter million dollars worth of equipment. Um, which just for context, uh, the animation I showed you at the beginning was made with four $20 webcams. Um, oh, they set it up quick because I deferred for a year. So, <laughs> uh, that's, so it was a year and a half, not a half a year. <laughs> uh, and actually they started working. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah. So standard time scale. <laughs> just, I was, I spent a year of that in Texas. Um, so here we are. January of 2020, I have the lab, I have the job, I've hired a bunch of people, I have a whole full, you know, I have a grant, I have a whole multi-year research plan ready to go, and then the funniest thing happened. So it turns out it's actually kind of a challenge to start a new human subjects research program during a global pandemic. Uh, and actually it turns out as well, being able to go into your lab is actually a pretty important part of being able to do research in the lab. So this is a video that I got about a month ago, thereabouts. Uh, this is what I was planning to work on uh, in spring, summer of 2020. This is sort of the, this is a, it's augmented reality ground plane. It's, you can probably see the thread from the previous locomotion research and sort of bigger and better and stronger in this big lab. Um, and this is what the plan was to work on in spring, summer of 2020. And that plan basically evaporated when COVID happened. Luckily, uh, I had given a side project to one of my students to investigate the potential of using open pose uh, to do a open pose plus GoPros to make a markerless motion capture system. I gave him that as kind of like a like play around with this while we're waiting for some research, for some, some equipment to come in. Uh, turns out that equipment took a pretty long time to come in. Uh, and when COVID hit, uh, I just diverted the full energy allowed towards developing that system. And this is what came out of that phase of research. This was back before when it wasn't called free mocap, it was just called the GoPro stuff. Uh, and this animation you see here uh, was a proof of concept. It was a brute force sort of approach, a lot of manual work, like hand trimming the videos and you know copy paste the path and pull the thing into the folder and change the name by hand. Uh, very not a functional methodology uh, for you know a lot of animation, but what I had learned from doing the animation Reddit GIF sort of viral thing was that it's worth brute force. Like my scientist training is like everything needs to be reproducible, but that training told me like brute force it just to get the cool looking video. And then you'll learn a lot and figure things out from there. So this was the first sort of brute force uh, approach towards the end to, to markless motion capture. Um, and at the time the plan was get the proof of concept working on GoPros and then use all my fun NIH funding to buy some fancy research grade uh, kinds of cameras and then push this into the kind of like high, you know, high quality kinds of like scientific grade motion capture uh, that I would need for my research so I could have something to do while I was stuck in my apartment. Um, however, this was also summer of 2020, uh, which for many people, it, myself included, was a pretty introspective time uh, to think about uh, all of the sort of complicated aspects of power privilege and the responsibilities thereto pertaining. So the, the plan was diverted from get it working on GoPros and then ramp up to more expensive research grade cameras to let's see what is the cheapest possible motion capture system that we could make. Because what I mentioned also during that time, 
I realized that there, I realized that there really wasn't low cost motion capture in the world. Uh, people who want to study, who want to record humans, and everybody has a reason to want to record humans, but main one being animators, video game designers, whoever, clinical people. Um, if they want to do motion capture, minimum buy-in is $1,000, and $1,000 gets you a bad motion capture system. There really aren't, there, there really weren't options out there for low-cost mocap for people that don't have a lot of research funding. Um, so we diverted in the direction of, instead of looking for expensive cameras, we were trying to figure out what is the cheapest possible system we could make. Uh, and it was one that we relied on $20 webcams bought off of the internet. $20 is the minimum cost. If you get them for cheaper than that, it doesn't work. I don't know why, but there you go. Um, the other thing we're focusing on is making a, what, what I'm calling a one-click system. So you, you don't have to manually do any labor. You just click the button, let it process, and you come back with the cool video you were hoping for. And so around that time is when the project really started to sort of form in the form of, into sort of what it was originally called open mocap and then kind of decided to be a little bit more on the nose and call it free mocap. Um, these are a series of sort of, I have probably if at least dozens, possibly hundreds of things like this on my computer, all of which were based off of this sort of iterative brute force approach towards making a system that works. Uh, and that's my mom. Um, so over the course of this time, I also want to call out uh, Aaron Sherry, who I think is on this call, uh, who is who after the GoPro thing, but before the webcam thing, uh, is really been the one who's been doing a lot of the like in the weeds kinds of work. Um, and so uh, laudations to him. Um, so where are we now? So that's basically, that's the story of the birth of, of free mocap. And uh, now the question is, where are we now? And where are we going? Um, where are we now is that these aren't auto playing. Um, is that it's starting to stabilize. The, the cheapo webcam based motion capture methodology is uh, stabilizing to the point where I, at least the people in my lab, can basically push go and get a, get a recording and have something. Uh, it takes some time, but it comes out. Uh, I've started doing, I've been doing software development updates and I, I just do them while being mocapped, which I think is, is both fun and kind of a flex. Uh, so, but this phase of the project is stabilizing the point where we're, we are pushing it into the alpha phase where we've been in pre-alpha, meaning like it's, it's kind of a mess where alpha is getting to a place where uh, it might be feasible for another person to actually use the software to do their own, their own needs. And we hit a very important milestone recently, uh, which was that somebody outside of the lab actually managed to make a, a recording. This is Sam Hodge, who is in Australia. Uh, he is a animator, uh, a computer scientist. I'm, I'm not sure. He does a lot of cool stuff. Um, but he actually, you know, slogged through our buggy, dirty code and managed to get his own recordings. Uh, and he's actually getting pretty good results with only two cameras. So that puts the minimum cost now at $40 plus a computer. Um, so this was pretty exciting because this was the first evidence I had that anyone outside of the lab had actually managed to use this thing. Um, so right now, in terms of the project, uh, things are starting to happen. People are starting to notice. It's both exciting and very intimidating. Uh, there's a Discord server with pushing 600 members. I stream on Twitch roughly weekly to, you know, a couple dozen, you know, usually around 20-ish people, which is a decent number. Uh, there's a Reddit, there's a Twitter, with which went from zero to a thousand followers in like a day. Uh, and then there is the uh, GitHub repository, which that's the star history and see if you can guess when I made that initial post. Um, so that's all very good. It's also quite intimidating. So the question then is sort of where, what's, what's the next phase? What are we working on now? Um, and basically for me, the goal is to kind of solidify the communities that have expressed interest 
while still pursuing my own needs for this project. So basically, I have scientific interests and scientific sort of like needs, like, you know, people have given me funding, I need to make them happy. Uh, like, and so the strategic goal here is to pursue my own research needs, while also doing the development that's necessary to support the features of the interested sub communities. And right now, the most interested, the, the, the sub community that has expressed the most interest is the 3D artists and uh, animators, video game designers and folks like that. Um, artists aren't used to getting things for free. So I think there's a lot of appreciation from that community for something that they can use um, that that if you're an independent video game designer and you don't have a lot of funding, motion capture assets are off the table. So they're willing, they're excited about something like this because that opens up avenues for creation that they would have expected to be closed to them for economic reasons. Um, I'm also going to be working uh, with the lab to validate the free mocap recordings against, you know, gold standard clinical gait analyses, like of the kind that I can do in the big expensive lab, um, in the hopes of sort of connecting it to the clinical and scientific communities that I think would benefit from a tool like this. Um, and sort of on that note, uh, sort of there's a, a kind of a guiding principle that I sort of came out, came thought of when I was sort of in the initial phase of this project um, and, and sort of hearkening back to my own challenges in getting things like open pose working and, and the sort of the frustration that I think a lot of people feel of like seeing all this incredible bleeding edge, like incredible technology emerging, being shared by the creators, but not being put into a format that anyone can really take advantage of if you don't already have a ton of technical training. So the way I'm thinking about the free mocap project is I want it to be something that a 14 year old with no technical training and no outside assistance can find, install, set up and run with minimal cost and minimal effort in order to generate human movement data that is functionally identical to what I use for my research. And the idea is that everybody has a reason to want to record a human. So as long as the project can support those, the, the desires of the people who are coming to it, while sort of maintaining a structure that allows for sort of passive learning, um, then, you know, then the people who use it will eventually become acquainted with the constituent technologies of computer hardware, camera hardware, computer vision, machine learning, AI. And then the design challenge is to create a system that is both easy to use and transparent in a way that usage over time will lead to passive education in these very important uh, technological subdomains, which I would love to talk more about if, you know, someday, uh, whenever at your leisure. Um, so given that, uh, so here are some, if I may just sort of say it out loud, here's some things that I could really use help on. Um, the first one is funding. Uh, I am, I have about a year and a half of funding uh, and, you know, working on, um, you know, and, and I have a lot of, I know how to get funding for scientific research from NSF, NIH. I don't understand the landscape of funding for open source scientific development. Uh, I'm looking through it, but if anyone has experience in that domain, I could really, I would, I would like to hear it. Uh, I'm also working on making a, the free mocap foundation nonprofit to support the software. And I'm struggling with like what, like how to make the articles of incorporation. So if anyone has experience in that, that would also be beneficial. Um, documentation, there's, there's, I came at this to make it easy and then there's like no documentation and I don't really know the right way to do it. It seems complicated um, more than just like write or read me. So if anyone has experience in that, I would love to hear that. Um, online community building is always a challenge, uh, but as these communities grow, uh, I'm, I personally am a little self-conscious about, uh, I, f I just don't have the capacity to engage with the community to the level that I think is necessary to help them sort of support and grow. So if anyone has thoughts or advice on how to do that, also love to hear it. And then just in general engagement, every sort of like, retweet, share, uh, adds a little gas to the tank. And I am deeply appreciative of every drop. So, uh, in the minutes I have left, uh, I, I was sort of, well, I'm already been, you know, I already been laying it on pretty thick, so I might as well bring it home. Uh, here's something, here's something that I thought of when I was sort of thinking about the different communities of people um, and different applications and aspects of this project. So 
And the scientific community will make it accurate. The artists will make it beautiful. The clinical applications will give it heart and the educational impact will give it purpose. Thank you. And I'll take any questions.